Here in this video, we are going to discuss Python keywords and identifiers. Python is having multiple different keywords. Here in this demonstration, we shall discuss some of them. The first keyword we are going to discuss that is true and false. Remember, true is starting with the capital letter T and rest of the letters will be in the lowercase and in case of false also, the same uppercase and lowercase syntax will be maintained. So here we are having a 5 equal to equal to 5 and 5 greater than 5. You can find that we are getting the outcome as true and false. So here the true and false are nothing but the keywords in Python. We are going to have the next one that is about none. So none is equal to is equal to 0. Now let me go for the outcome. So it is producing the output is true. That is none is not 0. None is not equal to false. None is not like an empty list. And none is equal to is equal to none, it is returning me the true. Now, what is the use of none actually? So, let me go for this. Here we have defined one function. The name of the function is a void function because it is void. Why? Because it does not return any value. So, now if we, uh, the return, if we assign to x and if we then print x, then obviously we shall get the none as the outcome. You can find that we are getting none. But here, if the function returns, Then you can find that it is returning the value c, value of c is equal to 3 here and 3 is getting printed. But if you just make this line omitted, if you just omit this line, you are getting the outcome as none because the function returns none. Next one is the and, or and not. So true and true, true and true, outcome will be true and true, outcome will be uh, true and false rather, outcome will be false, true or false, the outcome will be true and not a false the outcome will be true here. So in this way you can go for other combinations. So let me write some other combinations here. So let us suppose I'm going for true and true. I'm going for a uh, true false. So here we're having this true or true. And if you go for the true here. So now let me check what is the outcome we are going to get. So true and true is true, true or true is true and not of true is false here. So that is another way uh, to get the outcome and here we discuss that is the and or and not keywords. Now we are going to have this as. So input math as my math. So here we are having this alias of this module math. So here the keyword as has been used and in the rest of the code we will be using my math not the math here because the math has got this module has got renamed to my math in this application. So my math dot cost my math dot pi in this way you can go for the output. Next one is the assert. After assert you usually write one boolean statement. So five greater than five it is producing assertion error. So that's why it is some assert error is taking place. But if I write five greater than four so after that side, always you, write, you should write some expression which will return some uh, boolean uh, output that is a true and false. So some condition has to be written after this asset, after asset. So now here you can find that no outcome is obtained because both the conditions are true here. Next we are going for the break. Next keyword is break. So in this break what is happening you can find that for i in range 1 comma 11. So that means i will have the uh, value ranging from 1 to 10 because this one that is the lower limit will be inclusive and the upper limit will be always exclusive. So that's why we are having this i which will be ranging from 1 to 10 actually if you use range 1 comma 11. So if i is equal to is equal to 5 then break that means it will come out from the loop that means it will terminate the loop and it will come out from the loop. So what will happen? So I, the outcome is print i so i will be printed for 1, 2, 3 and 4. But here when the i is equal to 5 then break statement will be executed so print i will remain unreachable will remain unreached and unexecuted so as a result of that up to 1 2 3 4 will get printed so break will actually terminate the loop and it will come out from the loop here next next we are going for the continue in case of continue you can find that for i in range 1 comma 8 that means i will be ranging from 1 to 7 so if i is equal to is equal to 5, so when the value of i will be 5, then continue. That means the next part will remain unexecuted, unreachable. And continue means it will continue with the loop with the next value of i. So what will happen? 1, 2, 3, 4 will get printed. For 5, the continue will take place. So the control will be going back to the fourth statement again. So next time 6 and 7 will get printed. So 5 will be missing in the output. 
Next, we are going for the class. So let us suppose here we are having one class that is the example class. A class will be containing multiple variables and multiple member variables and member functions also known as messages and methods respectively. Here we have defined two methods. There is a def function one parameters we shall be passing parameters and then print function one that is executing def function two parameters. So print function two is executing. So now we are creating one object under this class that is an example so here class is the keyword to define a class and here the object has been defined under the class example class here so ob1.function1 and ob2.function2 will be called here so now if I go for the execution I can find that function1 executing function2 executing they are getting printed so in this way the class can be uh, def defined uh, using the keyword class in this way the class declaration will take this Next one, you are having this def. So def will be used. Def stands for define. So def will be used whenever we are going to define one user-defined function. So def, then function name will be coming, then parameters. And then let us suppose we are having this pass. Pass is nothing but one placeholder. So if we execute pass, then actually uh, no outcome will be obtained, no output will be obtained. Pass is actually required in those cases where we are supposed to enter or include some more codes uh, to add some more functionality to the application so that is the use of the pass actually so def is a keyword with the help of which we are defining one function and then you can call the function as well so now you can see this particular function we are calling so there is one argument it is requiring there is a parameter so now let me go for the parameters here so I'm passing say, say 10 here so there will be no error but obviously there will be no outcome because pass does not produce any output here Next, we are going for the del. So, this particular del, you see, a is equal to 10, print a. So, the value of a has got printed as 10. Del a, that means this a, this variable, will get deleted from the computer's memory. So, next time, if I go for printing this a, then one error will be raised, and that error is known as name error, because the variable does not exist, and is written as the message that name a is not defined here. Because after deleting the variable a, will be deallocated from the memory so next time if you go for print a it will tell you it will raise the name error here we're having this if elif and else num is equal to 2 if num is equal to is equal to 1 then print 1 l if elif means actually else if but here in case of python we'll be writing it as elif e l i f Always remember after if and after elif, we'll be writing one condition. This is the condition we are writing. After the condition, there will be one colon. This colon will indicate that we are starting with a block under this um, true part of this if uh, statement. So under this true part, we, are, we have kept only one statement that is a print one. So it is having one indentation. Indentation means four blank spaces. You can find that we are having four blank spaces here. So that will indicate that this line is having the first statement with the indentation and then we'll be uh, writing this elif with the outer dent with the out dent you can find that uh, the same indentation will be maintained for if and elif they'll be starting from the same column and num is equal to is equal to 2 it will check whether the value of num is equal to 2 or not then one colon so whenever you give colon and press enter automatically the cursor will be blinking with the new indent so that is a print 2 and else we're having something else so this is the if, elif and else block. Elif and else, they are optional. If is mandatory if we write any conditional block. So elif can occur for multiple number of times also. We can have multiple elif. So let me uh, go for the execution. You can find that it is printing 2. If I make it 1, it is printing 1. If I make it 3, it is printing something else because uh, because the num is equal to, is equal to 1 is not getting true. Num is equal to, is equal to true. 2 is not getting true so it is coming to the else part now let us suppose I'm putting let us suppose I'm putting another check that means another elif so now in this way what will happen it is printing 3 but if I make this one 4 then it will be going for the else part so I think now you are getting this idea of what is if elif and else block next we're going for this try raise catch and finally so these are the very important keywords so under the try, we'll be writing so many statements. We can write a block where we are expecting some errors may be raised. 
So, errors may be raised during the cal calculations or computations. Otherwise, we can also raise our error if I require to do so. Here, one error we have raised that is a zero division error. So, after this except, this zero division error has been mentioned. So, you are going to handle the erroneous condition here. So, then there is a, there's a respective remedial body. And then finally is that very portion that is a, that is a block under the finally will be executed even if the uh, any error is occurring or if there is no error then also the final block will get executed so let me go for the execution so division can be cannot be performed because the, the here the raise day zero division error has been raised here so but you see the final block is getting executed execution successfully so now if we make this one under comment if we make this one under comment then we can find that the execution successfully this particular statement is getting executed that means the finally block will get the control always irrespective of the fact whether any error has been raised or not we'll be discussing all these aspects in our respective chapters for more detailing let us go for the for so this a for is a keyword so for i in range 1 comma 10 so here this value of i will be ranging from 1 to 9 as i told you that the ending limits the stop value will be exclusive. So here the value of i will be ranging from 1 to 9. As we didn't mention any step value, so by default the step value will be 1. So that's why this value of i will be increased by 1 by 1. So 1 comma 10, that means 1 comma 2 comma 3 up to the value of i will be ranging up to 9. So let me go for the print. You can find that in this way the for is getting executed. Using this for we can go for the iterations and looping. Next, we are going for this from and import, another two very important pair of keywords. So import math, that means we are importing one module, the name of the module is math and from math we are importing this cause. So later we can use this cause as when required but there in that case we need not to apply. So I am just writing this one, go for this print, go for cause, say I am going for say 10 here. So if you go on printing, you can find that it is printing a value. So here I need not to write math.cause. I need not to write because we have written from math import cause here. So I can use this cause method according to the syntax as I have shown. Next, we are having the next keyword that is a global. So here we have defined one variable that is a global var. There is a read one which will print the value of this global var. There is a write one. Here we are mentioning the global var as a variable with the keyword global. So now this global var is getting updated. Now using the write to, we are also changing this global var with 15. But here you can find that this global global var, this particular statement is missing. So this now what will going to happen? So let me go for the execution. See, at first we have called this read one function. So read one will print the global var value and that is 10. So 10 has got printed. Now it has called the write one function. So write one function will uh, define this global var as a variable here within this write and this global uh, keyword is actually indicating that this global var is, an, is not a new variable but the same variable which is there as a global variable. So we are doing the update onto that. So next one is a read one uh, function is getting executed. So when you are printing this global var, we are not getting this 10 but we are getting this updated value that is 5 here. In case of now, we are calling this write to. In case of write to, you see the global global word that statement is missing. We are writing this global word 15. So what is happening? This global word is might be having the same name name as that of the global variable. But as we didn't write global global word here, so that's why this global word is working as a local variable within the write to method. So now, whatever the updates we are doing, that uh, that scope is confined within this write to method. So this global var, when it will get printed, I'm going to print the 5 again, not 15 here because we are going for the read one at the last. So in this way, you can see that in this code, how the global keyword has been used. We're having this in. So in actually used for the membership. So here we have defined one list. The list will be enclosed within the square brackets in our, in our Python. So 4 in A. So now it is checking whether 4 is a, is a member of this list or not. So it is producing the output true but if you write the same say print say 44 in a then obviously it will produce outcome as false here so that is our in and also you can go for the not in you can also go for the not in you can find that so 
4 not in A is false and 44 not in A is true. Next one you are going for this is. So print true is true. So is is a keyword. So its outcome is true here. To define anonymous functions, that is user defined functions, but no name, without any name, we are using the keyword lambda. Whenever we define user defined function with a name, we are using the keyword def. Def stands for define. But in case of anonymous function, anonymous method, the keyword will be lambda. So here you see lambda, so the function has got no name. It will take this x as input argument and it returns it to, it does the calculation that is x star 2. So that is two times it will uh, multiply this value of x and that will be assigned to a. So for i in range 1 comma 6, so that means i will be ranging from 1 to 5 and it is printing i a i that means this i will be passed. That means at first the value of i will be 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. And this i will be passed to this method and it is returning the 2 into x. So 2 into y will be returned. So I am going to get instead of 1, I shall be getting 2. When the value of i will be 2, I'll, I shall be getting 4. When the value of i will be 5, I shall be getting 10 here. So I can also print the value of i for the better understanding. Next we are going for the non-local. So this is the outer function. We are having this variable a is equal to 5. This is the inner function. Here we have defined this one as non-local a and now we are just updating the value of a and from the inner function we are printing the value of a. From the outer function, inner function has been defined so now we can call the inner function and then from the outer function scope we are printing the outer function a. So now we are calling this outer function using this statement. So you can find that inner function has got assigned 10 to a because a is non-local a that means this a is non-local that means the a is not local within this inner function that means we are using this a and whenever we are doing some update and whenever we are printing this one I'm getting here 10 and from the outer function also if you print this a I shall be getting 10 back here so here we are discussing the keyword that is a non-local we're having the keyword that is a pass which are, which I've discussed already so pass will have no outcome, you can see that I run that code but no outcome has been obtained because pass is actually working as a placeholder. So in future under this function function, if I want to add more functionalities, if I want to add more uh, codes and statements in that case I can replace pass because plus pass is nothing but one placeholder. Later for new code insertion I can replace pass with the new setup codes. So that's why you see it is producing no outcome. So let me call the function also. So I'm passing this 10. You see, it is producing no outcome here. Next, we are having this return. Return is another very important keyword. So a is equal to 10 within this function. The body is a is equal to 10 and return a. So now whenever we are calling this function, the, the function will return the value of a that is 10 and we are printing that value here. So now let me go for the execution. I'm getting 10 here. So now we are having this while. So in case of while i is equal to 5, i greater than 0, uh, print i and i is equal to i minus 1. So I have written this one as i minus equal to 1. So value of i will go on printing and this process will be continued when the value of i will be greater than 0. So if I execute my code, I will be getting the output for i is equal to 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. Okay, the next keyword is with. So with open example.txt w as my file. So now what will happen? This example.txt will be opened in the write mode. And here the, we are using the keyword with. And to that particular file pointer, to this particular file reference, we are calling this write method. And this particular string will get printed onto the example.txt. So now if I go for execution, you can find that the example.txt. So let me go for the... Uh, Checking example.txt has been created just a seconds ago and you can find that its body is having only one string that is the hello world which we printed here, which we printed here. So in this way, using this with keyword, we can open a file either in the read mode or in the write mode or in the append mode and we are having a separate section where we have discussed that what are the different modes are possible and operations are possible on our data files. So this is the use of the with keyword. 
we're having the yield that is another very important keyword in our generator so def generator we have defined one method the name of the method is generator and for i in range 6 that means here this value of i will be ranging from 0 to 5 6 means the value will be ranging from 0 to 5 and here we are not returning anything you see in case of generator function we don't have the return statement we usually have the yield statement yield will go on accumulating all the calculated values so what is the value here i star i i will be ranging from 0 to 5 so i'm going for the square of that i so it will be having the value 0 1 4 9 16 and 5 square that is 25 so now yield will return one iterator so now generator the outcome will be will be obtained in g and then from for i in g i shall go on printing the value of i and the respective outcome will be obtained here so instead of having the return in case of generator functions will be having the keyword yield which will go on accumulating all the calculated values and later from this iterator we can using the for loop we can pick up each and every element at a time in one loop in one iteration and go on doing the computations but here we have just printed the value of i here so in this particular example we have discussed multiple different keywords you can see there are so many different keywords we have defined other than this other keywords are also available but these are the most usable and frequently used keywords in our python code and on them we have written small example codes and we have explained that one with the required outputs thanks for watching this video